Hey YouTube, 3D Printed Life here with an update on my 3UP. I know it has been a while, but my printer has been down for about two weeks, and I only got it back up about a week ago, and since then I've been printing parts for the kits that I had to finish. Um, so batch 2 is completely out by now. They're all in transit or have arrived, which is great. <clears throat> it means I can relax for a little bit and just work on upgrading the printer before I start batch 3, which I hope to start by the end of the month. I forget what date is right now, but... Um, I hope to start taking orders for batch 3 in about a week from whenever this is posted, uh, which it will be posted the same day I'm recording, so uh, whatever, I'll, I'll get onto it. So um, as you can see, it's not exactly upgraded so much as taken apart, because at the moment I tried um, this new style of um, putting some more tension on the linear bearings. Uh, previously I had these two linear bearings. Uh, mounted just slightly wider than the rail and what that would do is it would tighten it up just a little bit so that it would uh, hopefully be a little bit quieter. Now what I found is that while this works towards the extremes in the middle it still rattles a little bit. So what somebody actually suggested, I completely forget who it was uh, quite a while ago, is actually skewing the bearings towards each other ever so slightly and you probably won't even be able to tell by this video but uh, maybe you can. They are skewed very slightly towards each other. However, after testing it, it was slightly too much. It was only 0.2 millimeters in each direction, so it ended up being 0.4 millimeter skew, which I guess is kind of a lot now that I think about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut that in a quarter. I'm going to do a 0.05 millimeter skew in each direction and reprint both of these pieces, and hopefully uh, that will be enough to slightly reduce the rattle, but at the same time uh, not have it bind up at all because it was binding up quite a lot when I put that together. So what I got to do is I just got to reassemble the original gantry. I also printed out these new XY bearing uh, B pieces which use a longer m 3 by 20 millimeter bolt so that they don't break as easily. Um, in fact it's pretty much impossible for them to break now which is good. So that will be much more reliable. Uh, that was included in like 1.3.1 I just haven't printed them out for myself yet until now. Um, also, I, well, I printed these guys out with the uh, relocated x-axis um, end stop to mount on those two holes on this side. Well, one's kind of a slot. I haven't actually tested that yet, but I see no reason why it shouldn't work, and I will do a quick test fit uh, using one of the, uh, the end stop from up top here and just bolt it in, make sure everything goes together fine. I also printed um, uh, Brian... I'm, I'm going to mess up the last name, so I'm not going to say it, but Brian's uh, cable chain adapters. This one fit very nicely onto the um, X slider A. No problems there. Um, perhaps a little bit of wasted plastic, but really not a big deal at all. I mean, it's still not that much plastic. Um, but I liked how he pretty much lined everything up perfectly with the piece so that it looks very um, neat and flush. And then I've got... Uh, three more segments, and then I have this end piece that will just mount right on here, which, I mean, that's fine, that'll work. Uh, and then I just gotta put it all together, but again, I'm gonna wait until this piece is good. Uh, what else? I believe that's all for uh, 1.4 progress so far that I have made. Um, however, there has been one extremely big change, um, and as you can tell by looking at this piece, the banding has been greatly reduced on all of my prints. It's still there, it's still very slight when you have perfect vertical walls, but it's been greatly reduced. And how I did this was by removing the top bearings on the Z-threaded rods, and this allows them the um, rod to move ever so slightly back and forth while it's going up so that it stays straight in line with the extruder, or the linear rod. So what this means is that the design now uses two less bearings. I can also use a little bit less plastic because I don't need this little chunk out here. I can uh, work those down for 1.4. And additionally, um, well, banding is a lot better. The only way to further improve banding, I believe, would be to add a second linear rod on the other side to make it more stable because right now it's only got one rod on each side. So it's still being um, influenced by the movement of this uh, Z-threaded rod back and forth a little bit. Um, so having two would help that. But anyway, what I'm getting at is I would need to have two rods, and because there's only six included in the kit and I want to keep the prices down, 
I won't be able to do that unless I go with a major design overhaul, which is a potential for version 2.0. What that would include would be removing these rods for the y-axis, keeping them on the x-axis, um, but transferring these to the z-rod, so the z-axis, so there would be two, th um, two linear rods and one threaded rod for the z-axis, um, and then using bearings with um, wheels on them to go along a track that would mount to the uh, extrusions here. Now, I would have to do quite a bit of research and some testing on how to do that, but I do believe it shouldn't be too hard. I should be able to mount the um, the wheels below in here, below this piece, and it would um, make contact with this rail or whatever. I would still have the dual extrusion pieces just the same. Um, anyway, this is, uh, of course, an experimental idea. It's not even a uh, proof of concept or anything yet. It's really just an idea in my head. Um, that I was thinking of doing for an upgraded version 2.0 and some uh, upgraded um, features that would bring into it would be reduced Z-banding from the more rigid Z-axis. It would also uh, fix some of the, uh, the slight vertical artifacts from this gantry not being uh, super rigid. It is pretty damn rigid for an H-Bot. Um, I will say that much. Like it's, it's really good, but it can always be better. And um, having two pulleys instead of a linear bearing, or two wheels instead of a linear bearing, I believe uh, would add quite a bit more rigidity to this gantry, which should uh, should improve performance. Anyway, I just want to show you a test print that I did at a 0.1 millimeter layer resolution. Uh, links to these full resolution photos will be in the description, because I know that my camera, or my phone uh, video won't capture them as well as the camera on the phone will. Um, but as you can see, the banding on the back of his head where it's uh, vertical, it's still noticeable. Not bad at all. Um, but on the front here, it's really not noticeable at all. It's really good. And the detail in the face is just incredible. This was printed at uh, 0 0.1 millimeter layer resolution. Um, and it really just came out fantastic. I have no complaints. Uh, and this was all printing without a fan. And because it's pretty small... Um, it probably could have used a fan, which probably would have improved the quality uh, slightly more. Maybe not too much, but a little. Um, but regardless, it came out extremely well, and I'm very, very happy with this quality. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, that's really it. I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm blown away by the quality of this, because I have been um, stricken by Z-banding for quite some time now with the design, and now that removing those bearings was all that I had to do, and it is printing in a much higher quality, I am, of course, very happy. So again, uh, the full resolution 13 megapixel pictures will be in the description of this video. Um, I will be doing another video once I have 1.4 completed, assembled, and tested and working and all that stuff. Um, I really do hope that I will just have to pr reprint each of these guys once and then I'll be done. I actually ran out of plastic from my original filament supplier, so I'm trying this new... Um, filament supplier. I just ordered a one pound spool to test. I also have this Talman filament in case you haven't seen or heard um, from my recent video, which I do plan on selling uh, filament un or hot end unclogging kits in about a week or two once I get the guitar string stuff wire. Um, basically, that would just include about two meters of Talman 618, uh, like a six inch piece of thin gauge um, guitar wire, which would be good for poking the um, the nozzle in case it is a hard clog, um, and that would just be sold on eBay for probably like seven bucks if I can do it that cheap. Um, so if you do get a clog, you won't have to buy a whole spool of Talman filament, which costs 30 bucks, um, which is what I had to do, which is why I'm going to try to make it easier and cheaper for you guys if you have a clog, because honestly, I've been getting... Um, debris clogs for quite some time with my Anubis hot end, and um, you can do cold pulls with uh, PLA, but it doesn't really work all that great. Doing cold pulls with this Telman, not only can you see how much debris is stuck to it, but um, it's it's just so strong that you can pull it out at a pretty low temperature and just get all the gunk out of the hot end without even having to take it apart, which is awesome, and it worked perfectly when I did it. So... Um, I will probably have a tutorial video on how to unclog your 
um, hot end using Talman filament and a thin wire. And I'll also do like a video when I um, do start selling the kits because I ordered all the packaging supplies and stuff for them already. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to shut up now and let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I will catch you all later. Uh, feel free to comment, rate, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you.